Next would be the consumer surplus concepts. So before we talk about the consumer surplus, there is actually another way to measure the welfare gain or welfare loss in economics. So which is called the compensation variations. Okay, so the compensation variation. This is the counterpart of the consumer surplus. Okay, so this is the initial expenditure function. So say this is the expenditure function of E. The price of goods is price x naught. Okay, given P Y and U naught. And now, if the price of x increase, to become P X one, P Y and U naught. Okay, so you know that if the price increase, your utility may be lower. So what is the amount that need to compensate you in order to let you stay at the original utility level? So these are the concept called compensation compensation variation in short CV. So this is equal to ex the second expenditure functions minus the first expenditure functions. In this case, you get the compensation variation. So how to Derive it, okay. So if the price of x not increase, price of x increase, so the budget line will rotate inward, okay. So if you want to stay at the original utility level, so you need to be compensated by this amount, okay. Parallelly shift. Then, so this is the original x zero. This is the new level of next one okay so the increase in expenditure is here so this vertical distance is the compensation variation so this is the amounts that you have to be compensated if you want to stay at the same utility level okay So, given the original price, lower price, you buy PX, okay, so as PX0, you buy at X0, and at now PX1, you buy at X1, okay, by this, you can draw a diamond sloping relation, so this is the demand function. So what demand function is this? This is the compensated demand function because we hold the utility constant. Okay, then you can see that by holding the utility constant, you can derive the compensation variations. So how to depict this in the diagram, in the demand curves? Okay, so as you know, the compensated demand curve is rang E, rang PX, okay. So the compensation variation, you can see that you need to be compensated by this amount in order to let you stay at the same utility level. So here and here is the same utility level. That implies this area is what you has to be compensated. So this is the compensation variations. So how to compute this area? You need to make the integral from px0 to px1 the compensated demand okay so this is also equal to integrated from px0 to px1 round e round px the dpx okay well this may not be a triangle so you need to use the integrations then this part is the so-called consumer surplus okay so the whole maybe triangle is the how much you want you are willing to give up okay so this is how much you you are willing to pay to consume x not amount of goods while what you actually pay is the bottom area so the upper triangle is the consumer surplus okay so anything below the demand curves and above the price is the consumer surplus so compensation variation can be can also be represented the loss in consumer surplus when the price increase. 
Okay. <clears throat> so next, let's discuss more about the compensation variation. Since we know that when price increase, actually you are having a lower utilities. So the XZ is the original utility or the demand curve based on the original utility. And this one is the new utility level. Well, when price of X increase, you are poor, so your utility is actually lowered. Okay, so which demand curve should be followed? The original one, we assume that the utility level is unchanging. Therefore, the PX0, PX1, B and A is the compensation variation. While the new one, okay, the new one, we take, we are taking the consideration of after the utility is lower, then the demand curve should be at the left of the original one. As a result, the compensation variation should be the PX0, PX1, C and D. So which we should use? Okay, so it so it's some ambiguous argument. Then a very good way is that okay, you can draw a demand curve which is flatter than the compensated demand curve. Okay, so this is the Marshallian demand function. Okay, so the Marshallian demand curve function can approximate the compensation variation because this is the just the middle of the two okay so Marshallian demand function is actually a way to estimate the compensation variations <clears throat> okay finally we'll take take a look at the review preference axioms and the substitution effect in the review preference so some economists will think that based on the axiom of preference okay completeness transitivity continuity so they are not easily to see okay I don't know whether the guy is rational or not therefore some economists resource to use the axiom called review preference so review press preference means that we assume people as if they are maximizing certain kind of utility functions okay so we based on the barrel induction we observe that the consumer will buy A rather than B. So we assume that the consumer is maximizing utility, so he prefer A to B. Therefore, if you see the consumer, if you see the consumer that given the affordable region, okay, if both bundle A and B are affordable, lie in the budget line, then if the consumer choose A rather than B. We say A is reviewed prefer to B. Okay. So when will the consumer choose B? The consumer will, will choose B if and only if this case Okay, given the budget constraint, if he cannot afford the bu the bundle A, then he can he will choose B. So the consumer will choose B, if and only if A is not affordable. Well, what if if both A and B are affordable and the consumer still choose B, then it violate the as about the axiom of review preference okay so the axiom of review preference can help explain the behavior how the consumer choose so we don't need the utility we don't need the indifference curves so based on the review preference we can still we can still test whether the demand curve is downward sloping okay so given assume there are given two bundle one is C, okay, consists of good X, C, and Y, C. And a, another bundle called D, consists of X, X, D, and Y, D. Okay, both bundle consists of good X and good Y. So if the, if the consumer choose C, that means that the price of X, C times 
number of XZ plus price of Y in bundle C with the number of YZ is smaller than price of good price of XZ times the XD bundle then plus PYC YD okay so if the consumer choose C, that means the price of Z times goods number of Z plus price of Z times the number of Y, okay, is smaller than same price but different bundle. On the other hand, if the consumer choose D, that means that the price of D times XD plus price of Y of D times yd is smaller than the given the same price but the bundle is different okay then if we add up both equation we will get pxc then xc minus xd plus P Y C Y C minus Y D okay before we add that we just switch the right hand side to the left hand side so to make the submission become easy, it's easier okay I just put every left hand side to the right hand side and set it less than zero then we sum the first one and the second one we will got we will get PXZ minus PXD times XZ minus XD plus PYC minus PYD times YC minus YD which is less than zero okay so assume PYC and PYD are equal so we ignore the second part for the left hand side we can see that PXZ minus PXD times xc minus xd is negative so this means that if the first one increase pxc increase xc has to decrease therefore we can see that round xc round px is a negative relations okay it shows that a negative relation between the price and quantity again a downward sloping relation is resulted so here, the downward sloping demand curve does not require the utility, does not require indifference curve. So does not require the utility maximizations. We can use it, the reveal preference axiom to prove a downward sloping demand functions.